All right, welcome everyone. So once again, focusing on glutes, hamstrings, um, inner outer thigh, let's start with kind of the back of the leg. So some options, we'll start with the glute and then move down the hamstrings and then around. So with the glute, I like to take one ball, but two works or a foam roller. Just bring it under your glute of choice and we start to roll around on it. So options for some of you, if this is your first time or you've never been here when we've rolled glutes, um, you can set on the ball or the um, foam roller as I'm doing. You can also lay down. Sometimes I like to lay down, it's just comfortable. And you can also do this on the wall. So if you have a wall nearby or feel free to move to a wall, you would just place the ball onto the glute and then we just kind of wall sit a little bit. So I find if it's a little intense setting on the ball, maybe going to the wall feels a little better or using two balls instead of one makes it a little bit lighter massage. So just to give you those options. Welcome Anne-Marie, welcome Lorraine. Yeah, yeah, several people use the wall because it, it just works really nice. And I like the control that you have at the wall. Welcome Kathy and Debbie, Linda, Kelsey. Welcome Bridget, welcome Mary, welcome Jan. So we'll just spend a few minutes on each glute and come onto the side of your glute as well. So into that outer, your glutus minimus and medius. Ah, yeah, you'll find little spots. I just found one where you're like, oh, and just, you know, you can hold your body weight up a little bit if it's too intense. Again, remember the wall works great on the glutes. And then maybe we find those little spots and we try to just oh, sink in and hold. So we think about rolling, we think about holding, we call that pin and hold. We want to roll in different directions with the muscle, same direction as the muscle, cross the muscle, cross fibering it. Even circular, when you're using one ball, circular works really well. Welcome Kathleen, welcome Leslie. So those of you joining us, our focus is glutes and upper legs today. Always, always my friends, you can roll, you know, any part of your body that you like. So if you're like, no, I wanna roll my back, my feet, you are totally welcome. I view this is kind of a little bit of a workshop, even though we're not in the same room with each other, feel free. Um, I am recording it tonight, so you might not wanna, um, unmute yourself to ask questions so you can it will just record you but feel free to type any questions in the chat box that you might have otherwise we'll spend maybe another minute on this glute switch so the same kind of rules of thumb apply you could spend you know you could spend almost 10 minutes on each glute if you wanted it's a pretty big muscle group but five seems to be kind of a nice amount of time. And that's about what we aim here, depending on how much we're trying to cover in a night. But I do try to get you through the entire body in a four week time period. So that usually works out to spending about five minutes per area. And so with that, we'll go ahead and switch to the other glute if you have it. Of course, if you would like to stay where you are, you can. You might notice when you switch over to the other glute that all of a sudden you're like, oh, that feels kind of more intense. And then you realize, oh yeah, I really did. I did get some loosening in the first glute. Welcome Heather, welcome Blair. So those of you coming in, um, upper legs, glutes, you can use massage balls. I'm using a single massage ball. You could use the two in, in a bag or sock. You could use a stick roller. It's a little bit harder on your glutes to hold the stick roller, right? And do it this way. But if you're like, all I have is a stick roller, what do I do? Or all I have is a rolling pin. You can actually take the roller on the ground and roll over it. And I'm gonna give Blair credit for this. Blair is here this evening. I think it was you, Blair, that 
that did this. And I was like, oh yeah, that totally works. It works really well with a rolling pin. My stick roller is a little bit small, um, but if you only had a roller or a rolling pin, and then it just kind of acts like a foam roller. Coming onto the side of the glute as well. Remembering if it seems too intense, you know, the sensation, if you're like, oh, this is a nine out of a 10, then maybe change positions, like maybe use the wall versus setting on the ball, or maybe move to a little bit different spot. So if you're rolling one spot on your glute, if you go a little lower or a little higher, you might find that, oh, okay, I can roll here because remembering that everything's connected. So as we loosen in one area, we'll start to loosen the tighter areas. And then maybe that sensation of a nine becomes a seven. I'm like, oh, now I can roll there. Welcome, Anna. So we'll spend another minute or so on this side. And we'll move into our hamstrings next. It's always remembering, you know, you can always pace yourself. So if you're thinking, oh, my hamstrings are great. I don't need to roll my hamstrings. I want to stay on my glutes longer. So it's a great option. to breathe. If you find yourself holding your breath, it probably means that spot is a little too intense. Shifting to another area. Pin and hold. And sometimes they don't really roll. Sometimes I just kind of shift. So I have like a little tight area right here. I can even kind of feel a little bit knotted. So I'm gently pressing in and I'm just kind of shifting. So I'm not so much rolling as I am shifting over the muscle. So another technique to try. Also, maybe moving the limb, right? I can floss the leg, moving the leg, moves the muscle, or I can roll on it, trying all those different techniques. Welcome, Krista. So we'll start to move into our hamstrings. Um, of course, feel free to stay on your glutes. So a couple of things on the hamstring, I say this every time we do hamstrings, but in case you haven't been here for that, rolling your hamstring with your leg extended, so sitting on the ground like this is not the best way to roll our hamstring. It's fine, you're not, you're not gonna hurt yourself, most likely. <laughs> I don't know, you know, anybody could do anything crazy. Um, but it's not the best way to roll the hamstring when our hamstring is already like in its extended. We want a little softness. But if I'm sitting on the floor, right, I can't bring that softness into my knee and still roll the hamstring. So a couple of options, if I had a yoga block or some books, I could place the ball there, right? Because now I can get a softness in my knee. So that's one option. Or typically what I do is just because I have this little bench right here could set up on the bench so I get some softness in my knee. So if you don't have any of that, like I said, it's going to be okay for your leg to be extended. You just, it's just a little healthier for the leg for that hamstring to not already be kind of stretched to its max when we're rolling it. We want a little bit of softness in it. Again, I like to use one ball, but you could use two. You can also use a stick roller in your hamstrings. Stick rollers work pretty well on the hamstring, so that's an option. And if you were using a foam roller, um, 
you know, again, you might be more on the ground with the leg extended, but try to get as much, you know, try to bring at least some softness to the knee. It doesn't have to be 90 degree bent, but a little softness just to take out that any hyperextension of the hamstring. If you are using one ball, it's good because you can go in circular motions. You can go side to side, back and forth. Whereas a foam roller, you don't have quite as much movability. But anything helps. Sometimes I'll pin. So again, you kind of find a little bit of a tender spot, maybe you pin it. And then my bench isn't quite high enough, but if it were a little bit higher, I could really, again, do some flossing of the leg, not hyper extending, but some bend and straighten. It's another way to move the hamstring muscle. And I just pin and hold. I like to cross fiber a lot on the hamstrings. So you can really kind of feel the hamstring. I like to go side to side across it. You can move, you know, closer to the knee or closer to the glutes. holding just right in one spot or even up to a minute. Maybe moving. Activate that muscle to relax. Another minute or so on this side. It's kind of pacing you a little bit. Welcome, Angela. And so if you came in and you missed, you know, you missed any yet, feel free again to move at your own pace. We just kind of started with our glutes and now we're into our hamstrings. We'll go ahead and switch to our second hamstring. So same thing on the other side. So again, if you are on the floor, if you if you don't have any other way of it to keep that leg extended, it's okay. Just you know, be aware of the fact that your hamstring is a little stretched. Maybe don't press in as hard. Um, but if you can bring a yoga block, so for those of you that just came in, if you've got a yoga block or a couple of books. You know, that allows you to bring a little bit of bend into your knee. So we kind of like a little bit of a soft knee when we are rolling the hamstrings. Or if you have a chair or a bench or a table that you can sit on, that works really well too. Looking to move in all different directions in all areas of the hamstring. Typically, Kind of about mid hamstring is where there are trigger points. Our, our bodies, you know, everybody's a little bit different, but there's kind of some general areas that muscles tend to have trigger points. It oftentimes associates to, um, in yoga, we talk about marma, marma points. Um, they are also often some of the same points that are used with acupuncture, acupressure. So you may notice when you're rolling different areas of your body, oh, I always feel like a little knot, like right here, like that's my tighter spot. We're all a little bit different.
If it feels too intense on the ball, remember a stick roller works well. And always your hands. I mean, any part of your muscles that you can you reach with your hands. It doesn't always have to be a deep, deep, deep massage. You know, just moving kind of the outer layers. We've got fascia throughout our body. Um, a lighter, a lighter massage is often really good for kind of the lymphatic system. Deeper massage, of course, gets into the deeper fascia. Muscle. It's not that it always has to be deep, even, you know, lightly rolling side to side is getting some movement in there. Yoga in general, really, really good for our fascia because there, there's the movement of it, the stretching of it. another minute or two on the second leg. And then we'll move into the quad, the inner outer thigh. So we'll spend it, we'll have about six minutes, kind of six or seven minutes on each leg. So again, options. And if you come all the time, feel free to get started. You know your options. Stick rollers can work really well. Stick rollers can use my hands because I can reach all those areas. I often like to take my elbow into my inner thigh. So just giving you options, maybe taking a single ball and just massaging it around. Now, most of us probably have leggings on, which is totally fine. But remember, the more direct on skin contact we can be, you know, even better because the legging is adding, it's adding like a layer of fascia. So as we're rolling around here, we are getting some movement in, in the legging. So if you're ever rolling, you know, not on camera or whatever, or wearing some shorts, um, so you can get right skin, you know, right into the skin contact or, um, foam rollers or using the balls like a foam roller. So if I put my two balls in the little bag and then bring the quad over the balls, I can roll here. And then no matter what technique I'm using, I can kind of get all the way around the, the leg. We've got the back of the leg already, but I could get the outer side, the IT band area. I can get the top. And then if I kind of work onto my, lay onto my other body, kind of adjust the balls a little bit and get my inner thigh. So just kind of rotating through all areas. I'll tell you kind of at the halfway point, so we're gonna roll for six minutes. I'll say it's been three minutes. So if there's an area you haven't gotten to, and then in the end of the six minutes, we'll switch to the other leg. As you roll regularly, you'll get to know, we tend to, you know, be, continue to be tight in the same areas because, you know, we work our bodies in the same ways. We exercise regularly, we stretch regularly, we want to roll regularly. But as you get to know your body, so I know, oh, I'm always tight in my inner thigh. So maybe I'm going to spend the majority of the six minutes on the inner thighs because I know that's where I need it the most. Or maybe you did something this past week that left you a little bit sore. You're like, oh yeah, I know today my quads really need it.
you are able to stay through the end, we'll get a lot of stretching of the inner, the outer thigh, the glutes, the hamstrings. You can floss the limb, bending and straightening the knee. So that a lot of times if I, like here, you can see I'm kind of staying in one spot. I found a little bit of a tender spot. Maybe I'll hold the spot and move the, the joint, the knee joint. That will take just a little shifting. I'm not really rolling here, I'm just Moving the body a little bit, take a little rock side to side. Trying to get the body to the release. I'm sorry, I didn't give you, I didn't give you a three minute warning. <laughs> we do have another minute or so on this leg. So if there is anything on this leg that you haven't gotten to, Feel free to go there now. And then of course, when we switch legs, you can always stay. We do have the five minutes in between the two classes. So that's always, you can always continue to roll during that five minutes. We'll go ahead and switch to the other leg. So again, same options, right? Use your hands, elbow can work really nicely on this part of our leg. Stick rollers. And on the balls. Working the quad, the inner thigh, the outer thigh. You move in big, big motions. I usually start there to kind of see what things feel like. And then where we feel the tightness, go to a smaller motion. all around the upper leg. Pulsing at the knee joint. And then hold.
let me check my messages. Ah, oh, yeah, thanks, Blair. Yeah, so some, some days I forget things that I say from one week to the next. So I think this is what you're talking about, Blair, that she really likes is, you know, taking like one ball into an area and you just kind of press in and twist the ball, you know, and then twist it the other way. So it's just kind of taking those outer layers of fascia. So hip flexors, we will get into next week. I usually incorporate the hip flexors in with the back. Um, so we will do those more next week, but if you'd like to roll them right now in our last kind of four minutes, a couple of ways to get into the hip flexor. One is through the back. So the hip flexor, we kind of think about it, you know, it, it, it flexes our, our quad, but the hip flexor doesn't really run along the quad much. It actually kind of attaches into a bone that's kind of right down here, like in the groin. And then it comes up and over through here. And that's that lifting action of the hip. And then it comes up and attaches into your low back. So the best place to get into the hip flexor is either into the low back, or we'll do this next week, but right inside that hip bone. So if you took the ball, I usually lay it on a book or a block, took the ball right inside the hip bone and let yourself kind of press in. And it's usually pretty tender, especially if you have tight hip flexors and there's not a lot of movement, maybe just about an inch up and down, but it gets right into the hip flexor there or laying on it. So that's why I kind of incorporate the hip flexor in when we do the back, which will be next week, um, because it also, you get into it from there. Yeah, great questions. And please, please always ask, um, ask any questions. So we have a couple of minutes um, to go if anybody else has any questions. Yeah, and I think, I think that's what you were talking about, Blair, um, where you kind of press in. And so especially if I didn't have a legging in the way, you know, and I took the ball and I pressed in and you can even like, you can see it, right? I mean, these little turning actions. That's really good for kind of the outer layers of fascia. It's not super, super deep. But remember we have fascia all through our body. If you think about the orange, right? We got the thick outer orange and then we've got the little white inner if we pull it off. And then if we come into the little pieces, we've got, covering over each little piece and so our, our bodies that same way is multiple layers and so this is a nice way to get into that outer layer and that is a, one of the reasons I really love this brand of balls the role model um, that we link to in this class I mean you can use anything but that was one of the things that Jill Miller thought about when she was designing the ball is kind of this rubbery material does give that little gripping action for the twisting. Whereas a tennis ball, it'll do it, but it just doesn't grip kind of the same way as the little massage balls grip. Yeah, awesome. All right, my friends, we officially have about 30 seconds left in this class. Um, feel free to continue to roll, whether you're coming to Yen or not. Um, if you have any last last second questions that you'd like to type in, feel free to ask those. Otherwise, I will see some of you in Yin in just a few. Thank you all so much for joining me. Happy rolling. Have a great weekend or great evening, rather, if you're not coming to Yin. If you're coming to Yin, I'll see you in just a few. Thanks, everybody.